learning time with me, Miss Frederick, and Javi, my puppy. Let's get started today with our Hello There song. Then we're going to practice some glued sounds with some flashcards. First, our song. My turn. Hello there. How are you? It's so good to see you. We'll sing in. Be happy. We're all here together again. I had to do that song one handed because my other hand is holding coffee. He's in a cuddly mood today. Let's get started with our flashcards. Now, scholars, I forgot to say for this lesson, you're going to need something to write with and something to write on. Make sure whatever you're using is okay with your family. Got it? We're going to be writing letter later. Letters later. Let's do our flashcards with our glued sounds. My turn. After I say it, you'll say it back. You got to repeat. And also do the TPR move. That means a little sign or gesture we do to remember the glued sound. My turn. A-L-L, -L, ball, all. Tend to dribble a ball. A-M, ham, am. Nice, and I pretend to slice the ham with my hand. Got a different sound. Oh, this glued sound, my turn. A an fan an. Excellent. A n g fang ang. I like that one. Pretend to have a fang. I n g ring ing. Wear a ring on your finger. My turn. O N G song on. Me, 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 me. Hobby, hobby, hobby. He's in my lap. You want to see him? Peek a boo. Doggy and yo. My turn. U N G lung um. And our last one for today. Tomorrow we're going to do some different glued sounds. The last one for today is A N K bank ink. Beautiful. Right now is where you're going to really need something to write on and something to write with. While you do that, we're going to take a quick coffee break and I'm going to get my learning target ready. It's time for a break. 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 It's Javi and Miss Frederick. It's Javi and Miss Frederick. It's Javi and Miss Frederick. And that was our break. It's time for a 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 break. That was our break. Let's do our learning target. Here we go. All right, scholars, I hope that break was enough time for you to find something to write with and something to write on. For me, I've got a marker and a giant sticky note, and we're ready to read our learning target. Let's do it together. I can write dictated words with glued sounds. Let's start with the word that's in the box. That tells us what we're going to do today. This word says, write. The word is write. Show me how you write. Is that how you write? No, that's how you dance. How do you write? I'll draw a pencil, doing some writing. That's what we're going to do today. Maybe you're using a crayon, marker, um, pencil, colored pencil. doesn't matter as long as you have something so that you can write. Now today we're going to write dictated words. The word dictated is important. It's underlined. It's a vocabulary word. Dictated just means that Ms. Frederick, me, is going to tell you the words. I'll draw myself. And of course, my glasses. Can't really see without my glasses. And my hair. And today it's in a ponytail. Okay. Oh, and I'll draw some lines to show that I'm telling you the words are dictated. Dictated words. And those words today will contain glued sounds. So they'll have glued sounds inside them. Some of the glued sounds we just practiced will be in words today. Remember, this is about half. A L L ball all. Is a glued sound? Let's choose another random one. 
O N G song um. Yeah, those are some glued sounds. O N G. So some of our words will have A L L, like in ball, it says all. Or O N G, like in song, la, it says um. Now, I hope, I really hope you have something to write with because I'm going to start saying or dictating the words and you're going to write them down and check. You ready? Let's do it. All right, scholars, make sure your writing tool is ready and your ears are listening because your first word is fall. Another name for autumn is fall. Think about what glued sound you hear in fall. And here we go. The first sound I hear in fall is like F fun. F. And then what glued sound was at the end of fall? All. Just like our first glued sound, A L L. Ball off. Let's add that to the F. F A L L. Did you write your word like I wrote it? Did you get that glued sound? Nice. Now, just like I did, I want you to draw a box around the glued sound. I'll show you on this one. The word is fall. And the glue sound is A-L-L, ball, off. Nice. I'm going to wish you rest on my board. Here's my eraser. I was looking over there, but it's over here. Silly Miss Frederick. And I want you to get yourself ready for the next word, which is <laughs> fling. If I throw something really hard, you could say I fling it. Fling. Safely, of course. Write the word fling. Alrighty, scholars. I hear some glued sounds, but first I have another F. Fling starts with the f sound, F. What's the next sound you hear? It makes a blend with the F in fling. L. Got that FL full blend. And then what do you hear at the end of fling? I'll give you a hint, it's a glued sound. Fling, in, in, in. How do you spell the vowel sound or the um, glued sound in? I-N-G, I-N-G. Let's find the card for that glued sound. Do, 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 do. There's ing, not quite ing, ha ha. I-N-G, ing, or ring, ing. I-N-G, ring, ing. Excellent. Fling has the glued sound I-N-G. Draw a box around a glued sound, please. And I will do it too. Again, the glued sound is in. Fling. I'm gonna wishy washy my board. You get ready to write the next word. Wishy washy, wishy washy, wishy washy. Oh, boy. It's making my arm tired. Your next word is plan. Write the word plan. Before I do something, I like to plan. If you already wrote the word plan, take a look, where is that glued sound? And let's write the word plan together. The first sound in plan is P. 
And then there's a blend. What's the next sound in plan? Ah, oh, P-L, pool, got another blend. Now, what else do you hear that's remaining in plan? Is it a vowel? Uh, I keep saying vowel. Is it a glued sound? Which one is it? A and let's find that card. Check to make sure your word is spelled like mine. And double make sure that you've drawn a box around the glued sound. A N like A N fan Ann. I'll fan you. Is that better? It is kind of hot today. Plan. Nice job. Let's do a couple more words with glued sounds. I'm gonna wishy washy. Your next word is strong. Write the word strong. There is a three letter blend at the beginning of the word strong. Start with that. And then don't forget the glued sound, strong. And let's write the word together. Stir is a blend. It's got three letters in it and it should be S T R. Stir. Do you remember that blend from second grade? It's got three letters, but you can read it and spell it. S T R. Now what's missing from my word strong? Check your paper. It's a glued sound. And let me hear those letters. I heard O, N, G. O, N, G says on like O, N, G song on. Yeah, let's draw a box around the glued sound on in the word strong. Your box should be around the last three letters, O, N, G, like song, um. Let's move on. Your next word that I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna dictate for you to write is tram. It's got a glued sound, the word is tram. I spy another blend, but this one only has two letters. What blend starts off the word tram? T-R. T R. And guys, I know the T-R blend can be kind of tricky. Tricky starts with the T-R blend too, but it can be kind of tricky because it almost sounds like ch 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 er. Almost like it's got a digraph. But it doesn't, not when we spell it, it's just T-R. T-R says tr. What is the glued sound you hear in tram? What is that? What? Are you sure? Let's try that. I heard a lot of friends say A-M. Is that what she wrote? Tram. Let me check, I'm not so sure. Tram, okay. Hmm. Now, AM and AM are the same. And this says AM like in him. AM, him, am. Yeah, I hear that same glued sound in the word tram. In fact, ham and tram rhyme because they sound the same at the end. Tram has the AM, let's draw a box. The A-M glued sound in it. Make sure your word looks like mine. Let's do another. Just got a couple more. 
giving your brain a nice big workout is good for you. Your next word with a glute sound is sang. So I'm not gonna sing because I already sang in the past, sang. I think Miss Frederick's ready to write the word. Are you ready? I hope so. What's the first sound you hear in saying? S, like S snake. S. Oop. All right, the S. And I'll try not to knock over my board. I'm being silly. S, another S sound. And then what glute sound do you hear at the end of saying? Ang is a n g does your word look like miss frederick's it needs the s that says s and the ang glute sound that's spelled a n g let's draw a box around our glute sound boop 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 big box today and we're ready to move on i'm gonna wishy-washy in three one and zero, just two words left, hang in there. You guys are working so hard, growing your brains, getting better with glute sounds. And your next word is plank. If I need some wood, I might buy a plank of it. Plank. And here's how we write the word plank. I hear a blend at the beginning. That blend is poo, poo, poo is spelled P. Oh, there's a blend. And what's our glute sound in plank? A N K says ink. Let me see if I can find the card. Plank. Ha ha, last one. Ink, A N K, bank, ink. Let's add that A N K glute sound to the end of the word. A N K. All right, make sure your word's written like mine, and then draw a box around the glute sound. Should look like this. Nice. Plank. And the last word is rung. Like if I'm climbing a ladder, I'm going to hold on to a rung. And let's write the word rung. What's the first sound you hear in rung? Er, which is spelled with the letter R, like R, R, er. And the glued sound in rung is It's another NG one, but it's U N G this time. Rung. Check to make sure your word is spelled like Miss Frederick's, and then draw a box around the glued sound. And that would look like this. Oh, nice big box. This word is fun. Nice job today, friends, working with dictating, where I dictated and you wrote down all of the words with glued sounds. We did half today, we'll do half tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, scholars. Miss Wagner, we're going to be doing second grade math. 
make sure you have a pencil and a paper or whatever to write with and write on and be prepared. Ready? Give you a couple of seconds to get those things to get ready, but we're going to be starting. All right, friends. So we're going to go ahead and look at this learning target. Remember, you're thinking about I wonders and I knows. It's think same thing we've been practicing. Get ready to read with me. I will be able to add and subtract with regrouping. All right. So I know is again probably the same. Adding and subtracting, you can be able to talk about that. And you may re remember what regrouping is, but you may not at the same time. So real quick, regrouping is when you have uh, ones that are 10 or more. So if you have a more than 10 ones, you're going to make them into a 10 and you're going to regroup them. I'm going to show you more about that when we get to it. But just to explain, it's when you have a 10 or more ones, and you're going to regroup them into one 10. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to it. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and look at this number, 39. And on your piece of paper, actually, just give you both. On your piece of paper, you're going to look at the number 39 and the number 97. And you are going to write the expanded form version of 39 and 97. So remember expanded, we worked on yesterday. We're expanding the number into the tens and ones. So go ahead and write the expanded form for 39 and the expanded form for 97. I'll give you a couple seconds to do that. So if you're just joining in, we're writing the expanded form version of the expanded form of 39 and expanded form for 97. All right, let's go ahead and talk about it. So if we look at 39, we're going to be looking at the tens first. How many tens do we have in 39? Three. And we're going to clap them out. 10, 20, 30. So we're going to have 30. And then how many ones? We have nine. And that would be the expanded form for 39. Let's go ahead and look at 97. So how many tens do we have in 97? Nine. So let's go ahead and clap out nine times. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. With how many ones? Seven. So that's the expanded form for 97. Nice job. Super easy if you practiced yesterday, which I'm sure you all did. So let's go ahead and get into what we're talking about regrouping. We're going to go ahead and practice what regrouping is. But again, just as a reminder, regrouping is when you have 10 or more ones. So when we have 10 or more of these, we're regrouping. And we regroup them into a 10. So for example, right now we have four, five, eight, 10. If we put these all together, they're gonna make a 10 stick. So if you already have 10 and it makes a 10 stick, you're gonna replace it with a 10 stick. Now, if you have 12, you still replace the 10 with the 10 stick, but now you just have the two ones. So that's what regrouping is, because it makes sense if we have 10 ones to replace it with the 10 stick, right? Instead of having all these ones, we just get a one handy dandy stick. So let's go ahead and practice some of these. So we're going to have the equation 39, or sorry, excuse me, 29 plus 13. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the 
bigger number and we're going to build that first. So we're going to look at 29 and we can see how many ones we have. We have nine. So two, four, six, eight, and then eight plus that one, right? So we have nine ones right there. And then how many tens do we have? Two. So we're going to add those two ten sticks to make our 29. And we are adding 13. So we have one, we have, sorry, three ones right here, and then one ten. And we're going to add them together. But remember, I keep, I have always said, we always add our what? Tens or ones first? If you think it's a, we're going to be adding our ones first, give me a thumbs up. If you think that we're going to be adding our tens first, give me a th double thumbs up. All right, we're going to be adding our ones first. So always add our ones first. So that's part of regrouping, right? And as I said, if you have 10 or more ones, you're going to regroup. Well, if I bring my ones over, I'm having have more for sure. Because these are already nine. If I put one to that, I have a 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a 10. So now I take all these away. Because I just replaced it with a 10 stick because it equal 10. And now I just have two ones left. So because I replaced it with this 10 stick, now I have four 10 sticks because that's including this 10 and this 10 plus the one that I re the ones I replaced all these ones I replaced so now I have four so let's go ahead and clap these out I'm going to point and you're going to clap ready 10 20 30 40 41 42 so that means that 29 plus 13 is going to equal 42 because we just regrouped those 10 and made it into a 10 stick all right a little tricky, I know, but I'm sure you guys are going to do an awesome job continuing this. So let's go ahead and do another addition problem. 57 plus 25. Now, it's going to be the same thing with your grouping. I'm going to let you go ahead and do that on your own first. Remember, take it through your steps. Build the numbers. Add the ones first so you can see that regrouping. Replace it with a 10 if it equals 10, and we'll see what you get. I'll give you a couple minutes to go ahead and solve that problem before I join on in. A little bit less than one more minute. If you finish, let's practice the same thing of being able to talk through the steps, either with the stuffy or a person next to you, even with your pet. I want you to go ahead and talk. What did you do first? What did you do next? What did you do third? And keep going until you get to the answer. And does your answer make sense? All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. So we have 57, that's our bigger number. So we're gonna build him first. We see his ones, which we are seven. So I'm gonna make those one, two, three, four. And I know that four and three make seven, so I'm gonna have three more. And then I have five, 10, so two, three, there's five. Now I'm gonna build 25 and I know I have Five ones, look at that, perfect. We got five ones right there. And then two tens. All right, 
So what am I going to do first? I'm going to add my ones or my tens. I'm going to add my ones, right? Because we got to see if we got to regroup. I'm still going to move my tens over. But I'm going to do my ones so I can see if I have to regroup. All right, so if I'm going to put them over here. Now I know that's more than 10. I can see it that it's more than 10. So I'm going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Look, there's a 10. So I have an extra 10 stick to grab. And I have it right here. I'm going to replace that. I'm going to take these away. And I just replaced it with the 10 stick. And now I still have two extra ones. So let's go ahead and count them up and see what we got. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember, I'm going to point. You're going to clap. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82. Nice job. So 57 plus 25 equals 82. Awesome job, friends. Regrouping is really easy when you can see it just like that. So we're going to continue doing that. Now we have to go into subtraction. So don't be scared because it's subtraction. It is the same thing. We're going to, you're going to be awesome. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and build our number 34. We got four ones and three tens. We got the number 18. So we got eight ones, two, four, six, eight, and then one. All right, so now we're gonna, instead of making these, uh, our ones into a 10, we're taking away from this one, right? Because 34 is the bigger number. But with a problem that we have is that four isn't big enough for us to take eight away from. So instead of making our ones into a 10, we're kind of doing the opposite. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the tens from our 34, from our three, and we're going to replace it with 10 ones. So two four, six, eight, ten. So we just replaced it with ten ones. And now that makes it easy for us to be able to take these eight away. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pair them up and take them away. And now I'm going to take this one away. And what I end up getting is 110, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it actually equals 16. So it's a little bit different. And so since this is a little bit harder, we're going to practice the next one together as well because we don't have much time. So 51 minus 24. I want you to do is well, let's go ahead and build 51 right now. We know that we're going to have five tens and one one for 51. We know and now let's build 24. You can be writing them. We have two tens and four ones. Okay, So you should have something like this. And now I want you to think again. I can't take four away from my one. So what am I going to do? Because I can't take this away. It's impossible. I only have one. What am I going to do? Right. I'm going to take my little 10 and I'm going to replace it with 10 ones. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just added my ten ones, same number, but I just have ones. 
And now I can take my four away. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now I have my two tens I have to take away. One, two. That leaves me with this. So let's go ahead and see. I have two tens. So let's clap. You clap them. I point 10, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 51 minus 24 should equal 27. All right, friends. It's really tricky, I know. I want you to continue practicing them. So take the numbers from today and you can practice them. Also, I can give you some real quick problems. Okay, go ahead and write those down. And those are ones that you can go ahead and practice on your own and give you a couple seconds to do that if you're not already doing it. All right, bye friends. Saluda Mrs. Mares. Es un gusto estar con ustedes otra vez el día de hoy. Hoy vamos a seguir con nuestras actividades de matemáticas, nuestra lección de matemáticas. Así que alístate con tus materiales. Si tienes un lápiz y si tienes papel, alístalo para que lo puedas usar mientras hagamos nuestras ecuaciones. Comencemos la lección de hoy. Nuestro objetivo el día de hoy, vamos a seguir con nuestras sumas y restas hasta 100, pero hoy vamos a usar reagrupando. Eso quiere decir que vamos a agrupar otra vez y dibujando como lo aprendimos el lunes para encontrar el total. Nuestro objetivo es poder sumar, poner algo junto, poder restar, quitar. 
hasta 100, reagrupando, quiere decir que vamos a hacer un grupo cuando necesitemos y dibujando para encontrar el total. Tengo un ejemplo acá y voy a usar mis decenas y mis unidades. Tengo el número 19 más 5. Si tengo 19, 1, tengo 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 más 5. Le tengo que agregar 5 unidades más. Si vemos acá, yo tengo muchas unidades. Tengo más de 10. Entonces, si nuestras unidades tienen más de 10, vamos a reagrupar. Ese quiere decir que vamos a hacer un grupo de 10 para cambiarlo por una decena. Voy a contar 10 y lo voy a reagrupar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hago un grupo de 10, entonces estas 10 unidades las voy a reagrupar porque es lo mismo tener una decena y 10 unidades. Entonces, para no estar contando uno por uno, voy a reagruparlo por una decena. Y ahora se me hace un poco más fácil contar por 10 y lo que me queda de las unidades. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Y así es como hoy vamos a practicar reagrupando y dibujando. Vamos a ocupar nuestros dibujos para encontrar el total. Vamos a hacer un calentamiento antes de comenzar. Puedes alistar tu papel y tu lápiz para que puedas escribir estos números conmigo. En tu papel vamos a escribir el número 39. 39. Y acuérdate que yo escribo el 3 en azul para saber que esa es nuestra decena y el 9 en rojo para saber que es nuestra unidad. Tú lo puedes escribir con tu lápiz. 39. Vamos a practicar lo que hemos hecho el lunes y el martes, que es dibujos para enseñar 39 y también nuestra forma de expansión, nuestra forma expandida. Para 39, ¿cuántas decenas necesitamos? Pensemos, ¿cuántas decenas tiene 39? ¿Cuántas decenas tiene 39? Tiene tres decenas, tiene tres palitos. Entonces yo los voy a dibujar tres palitos. Uno, dos, tres. Dibújalos conmigo. Tres palitos. Ahora, ¿cuántas unidades tiene 39? ¿Cuántas unidades tiene 39? Nueve. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Entonces dijimos que nuestras unidades son unos círculos y lo voy a dibujar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Muy bien, eso es lo que aprendimos el lunes. Ahora el martes aprendimos de cómo escribirla en forma expandida. Si tengo tres decenas, ¿qué número es ese? ¿Cuál es el total? Contemos en 10. Puedes aplaudir si quieres, puedes saltar mientras cuentas en 10, puedes hacer cualquier actividad o cualquier movimiento mientras contamos en 10. ¿Listos? Vamos a contar en 10. 10, 20, 30. Muy bien. 30 es lo mismo que 10, que 3 decenas. 30 más, porque tengo que poner mis unidades. 30 más, ¿qué me da 39? Vamos a contar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Muy bien. 30 más 9. Vamos a intentar un número más y tú lo vas a hacer en tu papel. Y luego vamos a ver si tienes la misma respuesta que yo tengo. Tu número es, vamos a hacer un número casi cerca al 100, 97. Escríbelo en forma expandida 
y haciendo tus dibujos. Toma este tiempo para pensar cuántas decenas tiene 97, cuántas unidades tiene 97, cuántas decenas y cuántas unidades. ¿Ya lo dibujaste? ¿Ya lo escribiste? Vamos a hacerlo juntos. 97 tiene 9 decenas. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Y tiene 7 unidades. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 unidades. Contemos a ver si tenemos 97. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. Ahora escribámoslo en, en forma expandida. Tengo 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, más, ¿cuántas unidades me faltan? 7. Muy bien. Eso fue nuestro calentamiento para comenzar a pensar cómo vamos a responder nuestras ecuaciones el día de hoy. Agarra parte de tu papel, lo puedes hacer atrás. Yo voy a poner un papel nuevo y vamos a escribir nuestra ecuación. La primera ecuación es 29 más, vamos a sumar primero, más 13. 29 más 13 es igual a, eso es lo que vamos a hacer el día de hoy. Ahora, tenemos que reagrupar. Si tenemos en nuestras unidades más de 10, vamos a tener que cambiar esas unidades por una decena. Y lo vamos a practicar con nuestros dibujos, pero también con los palitos y los cubos que tengo acá para que podamos ver ¿Cómo funciona eso? Así que comencemos con 29. ¿Cuántas decenas tiene 29? Tiene 2. 1, 2. Las decenas son los palitos, grupos de 10. Acuérdate que son grupos de 10. ¿Cuántas unidades tiene 29? 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a hacer 13 porque estamos sumando 13 a 29. ¿Cuántas decenas, cuántos grupos de 10 tiene 13? Un grupo. Vamos a dibujar solo un grupo de 10. ¿Y cuántas unidades tiene 13? Tiene 3. Muy bien. Si ya lo tenías en tu mente o ya lo tenías en tu papel, muy bien, eso quiere decir que ya sabes cuántas decenas y unidades tiene. Ahora, sumemos. Si tengo dos decenas acá y tengo una más para 13, ahora voy a poner mis unidades juntas. Tengo nueve unidades aquí. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Y a estas 9 le tengo que agregar 3 más. 1, 2, 3. Ahora viéndolo, sé que tengo más de 10 porque a 9 le agregué 3 más. Entonces tengo que cambiar 10 unidades para hacer un grupo de 10. Quiere decir una decena. Así que contemos 10 acá para poder cambiarlo por una decena. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hice un grupo de 10 y este grupo de 10 lo voy a cambiar. Y ahora voy a poner una decena porque aquí son 10, es lo mismo, solo que ahora la hice una decena. No puedo tener más de 10 unidades, tengo que hacerlo en una decena. Ahora puedo sumar. En mis dibujos, ¿cómo puedo enseñar esto? Puedo buscar que aquí tengo 9 y necesito uno más, uno más para hacer 10. Entonces voy a circular 9 y le voy a agarrar aquí a este 1 para hacer un 10. 
Estos son 10. Ahora sé que voy a agregar una decena más. Ya no solo tengo 1, 2, 3. Ahora agregué una decena más. Así que dibujémoslo. 1, 2, más una decena más, más otra que tengo acá, cuatro decenas y me quedan dos unidades. ¿Cuál es mi resultado? ¿Cuánto es el total? Contemos juntos. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42. Muy bien. Y mi respuesta es 42. Ahora intentemos uno más. Vamos a hacer una suma más. 57 más 25. Viendo estos números puedo ver que las unidades voy a tener que reagrupar, hacer un grupo de 10 para poder agregar una decena. Así que hagámoslo juntos. Dibujemos 57. ¿Cuántas decenas tiene 57? Tiene 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. ¿Cuántas unidades tiene 57? ¿Cuántas unidades? 7. Muy bien. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Y le vamos a agregar 25. ¿Ya las tienes listas? ¿Cuántas decenas? 2. ¿Y cuántas unidades? 5. Muy bien. Si ya la tenías ahí escrita, quiere decir que ya sabes tus decenas y unidades. Ahora sumemos. Veamos si podemos hacer un grupo de 10 con las unidades. Sé que tengo 7, 8, 9, 10. Tengo más de 10. Voy a hacer un grupo de 10. Voy a agarrar estas de acá y las vamos a poner acá para hacer un 10. Eso quiere decir que voy a agregar un 10 más. Ahora agreguémoslo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. Ahora tengo uno más. 6, 7, 8. 7, 8. Y me quedan dos unidades. 1, 2. Ahora contemos para saber cuál es nuestra respuesta. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 y 1, 80 y 2. Muy bien, tenemos 82 y esa es nuestra respuesta. Ya completamos la primera parte de nuestro objetivo. Hicimos reagrupación. Y sumamos hasta 100. Ahora vamos a restar. Nuestra ecuación para la resta es 34 menos 18. 34 menos 18. Es igual a, pues todavía no sabemos, pero 34 menos 18. Ahí lo puedes ver. 34 menos 18. En nuestra resta, acuérdate que aprendimos esto el lunes, solo vamos a dibujar 34. Ahora dibujemos 34. ¿Cuántas decenas tiene 34? Tiene 3 decenas. 1, 2, 3. ¿Cuántas unidades tiene 34? Tiene 4. 1, 2, 3. 4. Tiene 3 decenas y 4 unidades. Ahora, cuando hacemos la resta, tenemos que hacer algo diferente porque, veamos 18, le puedo quitar 8 unidades a 4. Es posible poder comerme 8 galletas si solo tengo 4 galletas. Esa es una pregunta que me quedo y me hace falta unidades. Entonces, pero tengo tres decenas. Si en la, en la suma hicimos un grupo de 10 y cambiamos 10 unidades por una decena, 
Aquí podemos cambiar una decena para que me dé más unidades para poder restar. Entonces le voy a decir a la decena que se convierta en unidades. Si tengo aquí un grupo de 10, ¿cuántas unidades necesito? Necesito 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Y si los pongo todos juntos, se van a ver como mi decena, como este de acá. Tengo mis tres decenas acá, pero en vez de un grupo de 10 juntitos, los tengo separados. Ahora sí puedo quitar 8. Entonces, a esta decena le dijimos, por favor, préstame 10 unidades. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Y ahora sí podemos quitar 8. 8, quitemos 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Y le tengo que quitar una decena. Le quité una decena y le quité 8 unidades. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. ¿Cuánto me queda? Me queda 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unidades. Y me quedan una decena. Entonces, mi respuesta, porque aquí quité esta y esta de acá, la hice unidades. Mi respuesta es 10, una decena, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Muy bien. Ahora, en tu casa, tú vas a practicar la siguiente ecuación. Cincuenta y uno menos veinticuatro. La primera pregunta que te tienes que hacer es, ¿le puedo quitar cuatro unidades a uno? Si tengo cincuenta y uno, ¿le puedo quitar cuatro unidades acá? Si solo tengo una unidad. Si solo tienes una, le tienes que decir a una decena que se hagan pedacitos y así se hacen unidades. Entonces, tienes que reagrupar para poder restar. Tu actividad para después de este video es que puedas hacer 51 menos 24 ahí en tu casa. Puedes usar lo que aprendimos hoy, que le pedimos a una decena que se hagan unidades para poder quitar el número que tienes que quitar de unidades. 51 menos 24 va a ser para que tú lo intentes en tu casa. El día de mañana vamos a seguir practicando nuestras lecciones de matemáticas, así que nos veremos mañana.